with a wonderful Stampin' Up! Something for You baby set. And I'm going to use the pram in this set and I'm going to heat emboss two images. I took out my Misty tool here and I am just going to stamp it with some Versamark on the bottom and I'm also going to stamp another image on the top of this sheet of paper. The cardstock I'm using is 140 pound cardstock and it is 5 by 6 inches. So here I'm just going to add some gold embossing powder and I will be adding it to both images. And I'm going to uh, do something, I'm going to 3D it so that I'm going to have one image for the bottom and I'm going to have one image that I'm going to cut the wheels and the top of the pram out so I get a 3D effect. It really looks nice that way. So I'm going to heat set it here and it's just going to take a little bit. And I was inspired by another demo that I was watching her video and a UK demo and she did a wedding card. It was not like this but I really liked the uh, elements that she used and so um, it reminded me of a card one of my first cards that I had made so I'm going to do this one in gold and silver so here we have it I am just going to heat set both of them and the best one will get cut out <laughs> so um, it doesn't take long if you have that heat tool set uh, preset so it's nice and hot and then you come on and you get really nice impression. So I've cut it out and I've taken this wonderful new Sizzix. You don't put it on that side you have to put that side down on your magnetic board and what this board does uh, it, it's actually um, it's not magnetized but it takes your dies and you only have to pass them through your die cutting machine one time. There's something about that uh, piece there that goes over your uh, magnetic board that makes you just have to pass your flat dies, just these um, type dies that you're looking at, one pass. You do not have to do two pass. It cuts it just like butter. So I'm taking some surgical tape. This is what I use to hold down my dies because you don't want them to shift. I want it to uh, be precise when I cut it because it has a little wee edge of white so you want it as best you can and the surgical tape really works well for me. You can get it at any uh, store, pharmacy, whatever they sell it and I like it on the roll there. You're able to get, also you're able to buy um, six to a pack so you always have some to put on your spool. So here I've cut them out and I am going to take uh, the good one here and I'm going to cut out the top portion and the wheels. And when I cut I try to keep my scissors in one spot and move my paper. I find it uh, works better for me because every time you pick the scissor up it seems like it leaves an extra notch. So there we have it. We have the top part and then I'm going to cut the two pram wheels. And I just love this set. It reminds me when my first granddaughter was born that I couldn't wait. Having all sons, I could not wait to get out there and buy the biggest, best pram I could find. <laughs> and uh, it's really funny because the pram comes in navy. At least mine did when I bought it. And it was an English pram. It was really high up. I still have it. I kept it. And my little baby girl that I bought that for is now 17. So she isn't a baby anymore. But it brought back some nice memories. And I thought I would do this card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do four of them. And put them in a pack as a gift set for somebody that um, needs a shower card. So, or a baby card. There we go, I'm just about finished and it's just such a nice set. Yes, I'm so pleased with myself right there. So after I've cleaned up, I put some dimensionals on the back and here we go, that's what I'm doing. And I couldn't find my 
um, I have two Stampin' Up! Pokey tools and my Tim Holtz Pokey tool. And the only one I have that I can find left is this one. Which a Pokey tool is a Pokey tool, I say. So I am filling it up. And I'm going to take those off and put it on the pram. And it will lift it up beautifully. I have had this set for a while and I have wanted to use it so many times and I just, you know, there's only, you know, either you have to have somebody having a baby or need to make shower cards and I thought this would be inv nice invitation shower cards as well. If uh, anybody in my family needs to have invitations, this would be an awesome project. So here I am taking out my Big Shot Plus. This is nine and a half inches wide. It is gargantuous. You can see like, whoa. I am trying to keep it on my table and the ranger mat underneath is making it want to slip. But I'm, I got the Stampin' Up! embossing folder here, the lace embossing folder and the matching die. And I'm cutting it out so I have I want to leave a little space on the front part of the card. Yes, that is one big machine. So there you have it. I have it cut out and then the top portion I'm going to move it up for some uh, texture and just to give it a different look. So I'm going to have that there and then I'm going to grab the other piece here, the top portion, and I am going to lift both of them up with dimensionals. Now I wanted to take it in just a had. I didn't want it to go all the way out on my card base because my card base is big enough like it's five by six inches so I'm just cutting it down so it so you can tell that it has a top portion on it it's not going to be flush see it has just a teensy eensy little bit and I love that look and then I'm just taking a little bit more off the bottom so that underneath it has more of a gap and here I have that wonderful die back again. Um, actually, it's not the die. It's what that Sizzix piece right there um, is wonderful. One pass. It's, I'm just amazed. You know how sometimes you have to have a shim and it doesn't cut all the way, especially with intricate dies. These are all right, these Stampin' Up! Um, dies I have right here but I still want to put it down because if one of those hit one another, you are going to wreck your dies. So you want to um, put some of that surgical tape on there. And then I'm going to make one more for the inside of the card. And so I'm just taping it down on this beautiful tool there. I just love it. And I love the new colored plates as well. There we go. Look at that one pass in my Vagabond, and uh, it's great. So, and what's nice about the Big Shot Plus is that you can fit, I think it's 16 inches long. It's huge. That base is huge. I'm telling you, you could do three projects all at one time die cutting. It's wonderful. So, um... I just didn't want to get it and fight with it up on my table because as you can see it took up more space in the lengthwise than my table offers right here so I just ran it through my electric machine beside me and now I brought it back out and um, I'll have to leave on my blog the name of this uh, Sizzix piece that I have there that you run through your die cutting machine and it's like I said, one pass. Look at that. You're not having to bring it back and it cuts like butter there. I just love it. So um, now I have my pieces. The outside piece, so what I ran through just there is a piece of fun foam. See how I'm taking the back off? I buy it at the dollar store with the glue on the back. Now I'm going to show you something with the fun foam. This way you get a precise, sticky, uh, dimensional tape and um, it's just the white fun foam you get in, uh, like I say, on the back is, you can, it's sticky, you can take it off. 
and now I'm just directing it right on top because you cut it with the exact same dies, right? So it's exact. But what happens there when you run it through your die cutting machine, it's going to squish a tad. So it's going to go over the border of your actual die cut on the paper. But watch this. This is absolutely wonderful. All you do is take your heat tool, heat it up a bit, grab your tweezers there, and I'm waiting for it to heat up, and then you're just going to take it and it shrinks. That foam shrinks instantly, and what it's doing here is just shrinking in, and I am getting an exact dimensional tape on here to, um, I don't know what I'm reaching for there, but, uh, oh, my Stampin' Up! one, because my Stampin' Up! one, I was using it so much that it stopped working. I had to wait for it to um, cool down. So here I am just taking it around the edges, and look at that foam shrink. And it's just dollar store foam that has one side sticky and one side's not. And um, look at that. I wish you could see that close up. It just shrinks it right to size with heat. And then you have dimension. You know how hard it is to cut all of that dimensional stickers to go around that type of a tag? So if you use your fun foam and then you put it on, you cut it to, with the same cutting dies, and there you have it. It is exact. You can't get any better than that. It's awesome. And it lifts it up from the page beautifully. So we're going to um, put it down on the page, which I've done. And now I have got the corners. I've got these little dollar store picture corners. You know the ones you get? Uh, back in the day, you put these on all your photos to journal. And I grabbed some of them. And I'm just putting them up in the two corners because they're silver. And I thought it would just add a little bit of, um, see how you have to cut them out because they're, they actually slide into the top. But I couldn't do that because of the dimension of having that extra paper on there. If that makes any sense whatsoever. So this is my Tombow Mono Multi that I have in my little glue bottle, my precision tip glue bottle. And that's nice as well because it gets right in there. And I have my Tombow Mono Multi in that. So now I am going to take my Versamark and the inside portion that I want gold, I'm going to emboss it right here with the gold embossing powder. And what's really nice is I'm going to take that embossing folder, the lace folder, and after this gets embossed, I am going to set it inside the same embossing folder that I have on the bottom of my card, that lace folder, the Stampin' Up! folder, embossing folder. And I'm going to have the same pattern going all the way around there. And it really stands out once you put it inside the silver um, die cut there. So, and that is Stampin' Up! Silver paper. You get two to a pack, the DSP, 12 by 12 packs. So here I'm just adding some Versamark, and I just added my... Versamark liquid and refilled my Versamark ink so it's nice and juicy. And I'm just going to add some on here. And if you have any questions about any of this card, just drop me a line and I'll be happy to answer them for you. It's really a quite simple card to make, it just has a few extra steps to do. So here I am just setting that um, gold embossing powder and I'm going to tuck it right inside that die that's already placed there, the silver piece. And when I finish, there's the uh, embossing folder. So I'm going to set this inside and I, I'm going to manage it like all the way around. There we go. Figure it out, Carol. I finally do and I run it through my Vagabond and there you have it. I tucked it in and it stayed on its own but you know you want to make sure it's secure so this detailed little uh, glue holder thingy I have in my hand here you just take the point and run it underneath and it's so fine 
that it just lets that liquid out a little bit at a time. And I'm going around and I'm just adding some of the Tombow Mono Malty so it doesn't move. And it fits snug. It really fits snug. So this detailed tip just goes under there beautifully. So now I'm adding white corners. And I found these at the dollar store. And these white corners have hearts on them just like the embossing folder that I used from Stampin' Up! The lace folder. It was amazing. So I've got them on the edges here. I put them on my vellum. My vellum is 5 by 6 the exact size of the card base on the inside. I thought it would be nice than just the plain paper. So I add four of them. And then I just slip that little uh, precision Tombow tip underneath. Add a bit of the glue on all four corners. And that way, when I put my glue dots on to hold the vellum, and that's Stampin' Up's 40-pound vellum, when I place those underneath, there it is. See how it has the lace there? That was a quick look. So um, I have the video sped up just a bit. So there you go. And see how pretty it looks. So here's the outside frame that I used to cut out. I cut it down to size. I'm just taking now and putting uh, my punch there, taking out the half inch corner rounder and cutting the edges off just to give it a nice look. And then you can see those picture tabs better. So I'm taking off my roll of tape and putting it down there. There we go. It just adds a little bit to the inside. I'm trying to think of what I am looking for right there. Oh yes, this part. So I've got it set in there and now I'm going to take the large Tombow Mono Multi because it's a thicker base here. And I really love this set. My very first card three or four years ago was using this die set. I just love it. So there you have it. I embossed that with the gold embossing powder. And I'm just going to set it there. And then I take the Stampin' Up! set and it has miracles happen on it. I'm going to use that one. So here I have put dimension, the dimensionals. I'm taking them off and I am just going to make sure that's even. Isn't that pretty? It's just so simple. And here's the little die I had in my stash and I wanted to use bows on it. And they're really fine so you could really do it uh, for a girl or a boy. So I put a little bit more of that Tombow Mono Malty on here, just tapping it on. And I place one silver and one gold on the corners like that. It just kind of, um, and I actually put a glue dot underneath them. There you go. I'll show you the glue dot there. I rolled it up in my fingers and made it a real tiny little dot. And then I add some of the Tombow later just on the long portion there so it doesn't uh, get caught in anything. And I set it down. And there's basically the front of the card is finished. Oh, nope. I have some diamonds. You have to love the Stampin' Up! diamonds because they shine like crazy. So I put one on each of the wheels. I put one on the pram, um, the top, the lid, that has a little round circle. And now I'm adding them to the bottom of the framelit. And there's 14 diamonds, I counted them, that go across there. And then I add it to the top. Isn't that, oh, I'm just showing you there. And then I add 14 more. Actually, I added 15 and I ended up cutting one off because I could tell it just wasn't right. So um, with a little work there, I get those diamond bling right across the top. And that's all you need for the front. And you could uh, change up the pram for anything on the front to make it, you know, birthday, anniversary, uh, any type of card. I just really love that pram and wanted to use that set today. So there you have it. 
and I did everything gold and silver as you can see gold silver diamonds and lace that's pretty uh, yeah that's kind of like a feminine card I would say and there you go I realized I had to take one of them off yeah and isn't that pretty you almost want to you know you almost want to keep one of them I may end up making five and keeping one just to because I like it so much but I always uh, take a picture so that I have a memory of it there you go so now on the vellum I had inside that set something for baby. There's a little bow. Oh, here's the uh, miracles happen. Because I think it is just a wonderful miracle of God to have a baby. And so I thought this was the perfect stamp for that. Miracles happen. And I stamped it and it ended up being exact. I couldn't believe it. Especially stamping it over after you've already... Um, Put the top layer on but look at that you couldn't get that any sweeter without a stamp on the jig or using your misty so i heat set that and that is going to go right on the in the center there look at that isn't that pretty it's going to go right there but first here's that little bow stamp that comes in that set you can use this for so much so i'm going to put silver and gold bows all over so I'm just stamping it wherever, turning it, and there we go. This, these are the gold ones right here. And then the little wee pieces, parts, I just, uh, that because I forgot to put my baby powder on when I did the gold ones, but they, I ended up getting it all off, as you can see, all the little dots, that the strays, but I used a... Uh, brush and it all came off but then I decided no get your baby powder out so there you go I have my baby powder and put it all over and I'm telling you there wasn't one stray after um, just reaching for my blush brush there wasn't one stray on here after you use the baby powder and it smells awesome in your craft room so here I grabbed the Versamark and it's nice and juicy and I'm going around because I want to add silver. Silver and gold will match the front. And it was a fun card to make. And I really appreciate you joining me. There are so many nice sets that you just don't get to utilize. And I really want to... Uh, You know, use more of my sets that I do have. And look at that. It, there wasn't a stray. So I've heat set that and came out really nice. Exactly like I envisioned it, actually. This is what I wanted to do. And, you know, I just wanted it to be a real classy card. I think it came out that way. So I'm going to set this in the middle. I'm going to thank you once again for joining me. And I will leave you until the next card. I have uh, some more to upload. So have a blessed evening. Mm -hmm.